How's it going guys and welcome back to Demo RPG with C++ and we are continuing to learn and go. And we're on actually a rather difficult section and this is a section that actually most games get wrong and most popular games that you know and you play get this wrong. So like pay close attention because this little lesson here in C++ is going to put you far ahead of your peers especially if you're new to it and still learning stuff. So I hope you uh, appreciate the value of this series. And if you do, hit the like button and don't forget to also subscribe. And if you want to go to the extra mile, you can uh, hit the join button uh, down there on YouTube or join on the Patreon to help support me and these productions and this channel. So first, I want to address what I said. All right, most games get this wrong. What am I talking about? You guys ever watch the Spiffing Brits channel? Uh, you know how he pretty much knows how to dupe items in every game? It's because the programmers uh, don't know how to manage memory correctly. And when you don't manage memory correctly, you leave little bugs like, oh, you can dupe items if you do things in a certain order. That sort of thing happens. But don't worry, because we can just say, I've got stuff for sale, and she's got all of our money just hanging around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sell her this cork bulb root, press E, go into her inventory, and sell her back her own ingredients. I think fire salts are fantastic for this. So there we go, we're bam. You'll notice in the bottom right, we are just gaining money and speech as we convince her to buy her own goods off of her. Yes. So Skyrim is just riddled with these types of bugs. It's not the only game, it's not the only one, but it's a great example. And uh, basically, they, the programmers don't really know how to code. They're just kind of like letting things copy and letting pointers have multiple references to the same object and just not controlling who owns the memory. We're not going to do that here. We're going to make it actually work properly and we're going to make it unhackable. Unless, of course, you go in with a bytecode editor and decompile and change the memory, but through its actual, the way it's made to play, it's going to be impossible to break things. That's what you should aim for, and that's what we're going to aim for with all of our systems here. So, a little more legit than multi-million dollar games. I know, I know, right? And you can get it all for free here on YouTube, so please support me. Okay, this episode, this, uh, yeah, this is probably going to be multiple episodes. There's no way I'm going to get all this done in one. Let me shrink myself down here. Okay. So you'll notice from last episode, we sorted out some equipment. We got that all mostly working and we can uh, kind of do some cool things with it. Like, you know, equip up our warrior with some pieces and he actually gets the stats from it, which is kind of cool. But, uh, we, you know, we were mentioning the inventory is not really sorted out yet. So we're going to kind of work on that. I might not get to the inventory till next episode because right now, we're just going to work on expanding this beyond equipment. Basically, we're going to do a similar system that we did with the player character. And, uh, you know, if you've been following this on GitHub, you might notice there's been some commits and uh, stuff I'm kind of backtracking on. So this is like my third attempt at this episode, I think, because this is hard. This isn't exactly easy. And uh, there's a reason why people get stuck on their, their stuff. But I think I've got it pretty well figured out now. And, uh, yeah. I just really hope that people actually appreciate him putting this much time into it. Is all I'm saying because it always. Eh, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that, but you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, please, please do. Uh, yeah. So yeah, our character. We have the whole player character delegate. We're gonna do a similar things with items. You can't instantiate the delegate. This is just used to uh, have some base stuff uh, for all characters. And we're probably gonna use this later for monsters too. Uh, so it's it's expandable and you know we'll, we'll come to that when we come to that but for equipment we also want to do that this a same thing like we're gonna have class item delegate all right and that's gonna have the base stuff of all that items all items are gonna have a name that's one thing they're definitely gonna have and so equipment uh, we don't want to ever instantiate equipment either so equipment's gonna change into a delegate and it's gonna inherit from item delegate because they're all items. But uh, we just want equipment to basically be, you know, the stuff that all armor and weapons use. And we don't ever want to instantiate weapon and armor uh, itself. Or, well, we want to do it kind of like we did with the player character class. If we go all the way down to the bottom of the player character class, that's find it. It's kind of kind of grown with all the functions. We have a player character that doesn't inherit from everything, and that from anything. And that's what we use in our actual game. The rest of the stuff is all just boilerplate stuff uh, for it. So we're going to do a very similar, similar thing here. All right, we're going to make this public. 
And we also want to have something uh, privately, I'd say. No, not privately. Actually, we'll just make it const. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we're going to make it an unsigned int, but we want a unique ID. We're going to have each item have a unique ID. Uh, so, unique ID, uh, but uh, we need a type for it. Let's just use unsigned ints. Uh, we'll use uint32t. We'll make it uh, potentially pretty pretty large and unique ID. And since it's const, you're not going to be able to change it. You'll be able to access it since it's public, but never be able to change it. Now, uh, we might, hmm, this, this is going to get a little inter interesting when we're stacking items. So maybe we need to think about that. So maybe the unique ID belongs more in equipment because equipment's not going to be stackable in general. Uh, but uh, things like potions might be. So uh, we'll have like, uh, yeah, we're not going to do consumables just yet. But the point is, consumables aren't exactly unique. If you got like, say, minor healing potions, you should be able to stack those up. You don't want them to each have their unique ID. So we will keep that in mind and address that when it comes up. But for now, every single item at least has a name. Every single equipment at least has a unique ID. Uh, we don't need name here anymore because we have that inherited here. But we still do need the rest of the stuff. Now we have a pure virtual get type here. We're actually going to put that up here into the item delegate. Now, really, we're not going to use this get type. We just need something in here that is pure virtual to make sure that, uh, well, we're going to use some some type checking later uh, with our inventory. So we're just going to use this function right now. It's like a placeholder to do that. All right, so we move down to our equipment. Now, equipment's got a unique ID, and it's got stats on it. Uh, so we kind of sorted out that at last episode, but we've got this protected equipment constructor, which is now equipment delegate. And uh, we're gonna make instantiate this name like so, and we need a little constructor here. And we, you know, these don't need to be public necessarily. These can be protected, uh, which makes it just a little more clear that you're not supposed to use it in case the virtual wasn't, but it doesn't actually matter if you make this uh, public or protected, but it has to be one of them. Uh, standard string name and it's going to go name and of course that's going to be just name okay so something interesting is happening here we have this const unique id and we, what's this complaining about this is complaining it's got a little green underline i don't know if you can see it's kind of small but basically it's saying that we need to set this const to something and uh, I'm not sure if we can actually do that in a header. Let's see, unique ID equals. So if it's unique, what's it gonna be? Okay, so this is this is a little tricky. We're gonna need something, you know, a lot of people do unique IDs with some sort of hashed value, and we could do that, but that's overkill. So we're just gonna increment some static variable, and static will mean that there can only be one of this variable, and uh, they'll just increment up. So let's make a static, unsigned um, ID, we'll just call it ID iterator, call it whatever you want really. But we're going to start this out at zero. And it doesn't like this. Why doesn't it like this? And remember with an in-class initializer must be must be const, or it says a static. A member with an in-class initializer must be const. Okay, so it doesn't like initializing it, even if it's static. So we need this outside the class. Uh, we could put it like here in the header, but that means that anyone that includes this equipment class has access to this and they could change it. And we don't want that to happen. So, cause that's a little dangerous. So we're going to change how this works a little bit. Let's do, first of all, let's rename this equipment into just item. All right. Because it's going to be items in general, not just equipment. It's going to be a, it's going to be a lot of stuff in this file. And let's make the CPP of this. All right. So we're just going to go add. I right click here, add new item, CPP file, and just put in item. And then we got to include item dot h. All right. And we're going to put this static variable over in here. And maybe we'll make it a little more specific. We'll make it uh, equipment ID, unique ID, ID iterator, you know, something like that. Something that's clear 
what it is. All right, now, since it's in a CVP file, we can actually initialize it to zero. So it's zero for unsigned. So the first, when this first gets built, when this first runs, this is gonna start out as zero. And now we're gonna do something interesting. Okay, this function right here for this equipment delegate, uh, we're not, it's not gonna know about this equipment ID iterator. So basically we need to build this function in the CPP file, that's all. All right, and you might know how to do this already. It's, uh, you know, it's just a constructor. Equipment delegate scoped to equipment delegate constructor. Uh, let's go back here and copy this stuff, this, the name and stats, there we go. Let's make a little new line here. And it, uh, it wants something here in its body. And that's gonna be that unique ID, this right here. So we'll go unique ID equals whatever this value is. But we're gonna put a pre-increment, there we go. So it'll initialize to this, whatever this is, but uh, plus one. So there's gonna be no ID zero. It's gonna start out ID one because this is gonna pre uh, go up. And what is this complaining about now? No initializer for const member. Okay, well, we've got it now. All right, so it can't complain. Maybe it still will, but that should go away. Expression must be mod. Oh, okay, we need to do it in this instructor because this is like, it's already constructed uh, all the variables at this point. So we need to actually instruct them by doing it like so. We'll do it up here and we can use this pre-increment right here. I believe that's gonna work. Yeah, and there we go. No more little green squigglies, it is happy. So there we go, it's gonna, it's gonna give everyone a unique ID and this is gonna plus up every time too. Uh, so, and nobody has access to this. It's in a C++ file. No one in the program has access to it. Uh, they could get access to it if they wanted to through a little trick, but you're not supposed to. If you do, you're gonna break the software. Don't change this, only the equipment delegate. We'll put a comment. Uh, instructor should touch this, just in case, because people could technically, if they really wanted to, they could go to the main, and they could go, eh I'll, I'll, sh I'll do you one better, X turn, they could, get, they could go like this, and then they could have access to it, but don't do that, that's, that's dangerous, try to avoid X turn as much as you can, so, just so you're aware. And now we have a comment there that says it once again, just in case anybody uh, gets it in their head that it's a good idea, but so there you go. So this basically will isolate it to this file. And that's what we want here. So now equipment has a unique ID, which is what we want. Not necessarily all items, but all equipment. And we might do this for other things too, but you know, like quest items or something, but that's kind of for other people to decide. For now, uh, we're assuming there's gonna be this, but uh, all right, so let's go ahead and fix our armor and equipment for now and work on just a few other things. So now armor's, armor's going to uh, inherit from equipment delegate, equipment delegate, it's gonna use this constructor, which is gonna give a unique ID, and it's also gonna give it a name from the item and all that good stuff. Uh, there we go, see so it gives us a name there, all right. Uh, this one looks good. Uh, this one, we need to do the same thing. And it's already pretty much good to go. Now you notice in this equipment delegate, it looks like it could be instantiated, but it can't because it's inheriting from item delegate. And item delegate has a pure virtual function. We are not overwriting it here, which means this is, uh, you can't construct this unless you're overwriting it, which we, you know, with armor and weapon, can actually construct them because we are overriding that function. So there we go. We've got four classes in there and we're pretty much good to go. But what we really want is we want an item slot. All right. Just like a, we don't really want to make weapons and armor all over the place. Like we don't want to have to have an inventory that, that has like modular well, we want it to be modular, but we want it to be automatically modular, if that makes sense. So uh, rather than having like 
every little field in our inventory, like an enum that can be a bunch of different things or something, what we can do is just make it just like an item. And this is going to be basically using the power of what we were doing with the player character. Composition. All right, so we're going to compose together a character. Oh, I guess we got to fix equipment here too. These uh, equipments are now equipped delegate. This is over in the player character class. So we'll just get that fixed up. I think that's the only place. And we're probably going to have to fix a few other things here too. But for the most part, it's going to be about the same. All right, let's go back to the item. And let's go ahead and make a class. It's called plain old item. All right, so we'll have... And this is, this is not going to inherit from anything. This will be the one we actually use. And what we're going to do here is we're going to, let's just make it all public for now to keep it simple. We're going to have item delegate pointer just called uh, item. And this is what the item actually is. And then in the con we need a constructor. And in this constructor, we need to take a pointer to an item, basically. So let's go item, item. And this is gonna, this is what's gonna instantiate it. And we'll say item, uh, I guess this, uh, we'll just call it something else. You know, this will be like the data. I guess we'll call it data, underscore data. That, uh, that's gonna make it a little more clear, I guess. We'll just do that for now. Call key. And I think that works. I'm going to say this is a little wrong. Okay, this needs to be an item delegate point, right? And I itself is an item, so that, that's not going to work. So we need to instantiate this here at runtime. Function definition for item not found. Okay, I'm not sure what it's talking about there, but this should work. Okay, I'm not sure exactly why that's messed up, but if we go back to our player character, we know we renamed equipment to items. So we got to fix that in some headers here. Uh, and that's part of the reason things are a little wonky. So just keep that in mind. Um, all right, so let's let's just hit compile and see if we get any errors. And we do. And it looks like it's uh, we need to fix a few more things here. Equipment delegate, this is in the player character. Just everything that said equipment now needs to see say equipment delegate so we can cast as needed uh, to whatever type of equipment it is. All right, let's, uh, at this point, let's just hit build just to sort out the current errors we have. And it looks like it's just equipment stuff. Let's see if there's any more. Let's keep hitting build here and it succeeds. All right, so if we go back to item, it's still underlined, but I think it's inaccurate. Sometimes Visual Studio just takes some time to catch up and, uh, uh, that's something I'm used to at this point. All right, so right now everything works. If we go back to our main, now it works with our new system, except any equipment we instantiate now is going to have that unique uh, name or unique ID. It can have the same name, but it's going to have different IDs. And that's really important uh, because we don't want things to get messed up based on the name. So now we're going to be able to do some pretty cool things. This is stuff we could kind of already do. We were using this dynamic cast or from last episode to check if it was a weapon, basically. Uh, and let's see where we'll be able to use that for the all over the place. We're going to be able to use that for our inventory in general for any new item we make. And we'll be able to do, use that for our classes too. But for example, okay, so... There's, there's the base item delegate. And then we got a whole equipment set up. And maybe we'll end up moving this equipment to a different file, but I don't think so. I think it's fine here. But basically, uh, this is the one you want to use in your runtime code. Uh, you want to make items. So we need to straighten that out. Uh, and we also, so basically, we kind of want to say for this weapon and armor, we don't want people to be able to actually instantiate these. Uh, but they're going to be able to. There's no, there's no good way around that, really. But really what we want people to do is to call this just item delegate, or rather, uh, item. Uh, let me get this straight out here. 
just item. And so item full plate mail. And then in the constructor, put this new armor. You know, kind of like we did with the, the warrior here. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill out uh, this here and this slot as whatever we construct it with. So it's going to be pretty nice for runtime. It's going to change a lot of this code. So it's going to change this equip code a little bit. Uh, we, we're going to rechange this whole quip method uh, to, to swap with some sort of inventory. And it'll make a lot more sense because uh, inventory is going to be yeah, an open-ended thing. Like you're going to have the player's main, main inventory, right? Or, you know, maybe your main stash as the player of the game, something you always have access to. You're also going to be opening chests and loot boxes or whatever it may be, or other backpacks or looting mobs. Those are essentially going to be little inventory caches as well. And you should be able to pull from them and either equip stuff or put it into your inventory. So we're going to build those sort of systems and we're going to make sure that they don't allow duping and all kinds of stuff like that. That's that's going to be the important thing. So a little bit of boilerplate for that, but we're going to walk through it all. So let's keep going. So this equip function is not really going to work anymore because uh, from item to item delegate. So what we actually need to equip is the full plate mail data. Let's see if it likes that. Uh, but let's see. Type item delegate is incompatible with type equipment delegate. So we need to cast this to something else. And we can do it like this. We can say whenever you try to equip, just dynamic cast this data to an equipment delegate. And if this fails, it's going to be null. If it doesn't fail, it's going to cast to the type it is. We might actually want to do this beforehand. This might be kind of janky. If we go to our equip code, we'll see that it does, it takes this equipment delegate and sees checks of its armor, checks if it's a weapon, and puts it in the right slot. But what we probably want to do here is go if uh, not thing return, or return false, I guess, or fail, because we're equipment pool here. Because uh, we want to see if they're trying to pass null. You know, this pointer could be null. We want to check. So if it's null, we just want to return and not do any sort of equipping. So that's that's pretty important. But uh, we'll keep working on this equip function. It's it's definitely going to change quite a bit as we go. And we're probably going to change some other stuff too. But I'm trying to isolate this episode to strictly the items. Why do I have item open twice here? That's kind of weird. Okay. All right, so let's uh, keep sorting out this main code here and uh, see what we can do. Let's go, let's change this leather helm to an item and just do the same thing here. Let's fix this. Equip, well, let's go ahead and go dynamic cast to equipment delegate star and then leather helm uh, dot uh, the date the data leather helm so that's what we're actually equipping and let's see how that goes uh long is going to be the same thing it's just an item and we're going to make sure it sets the data by doing this sort of thing and uh, we'll just copy this actually it's going to be a little faster let's fill this in with long sword there we go copy and paste to save time wherever you can and here's where we start going through our class and test the level up and uh, check the equipped armor check the equipped weapon uh, apply a buff yeah that all that stuff is, is there so let's just go ahead and run this and see if it actually runs and it looks like it does let's just check that everything's correct so let's go through this a bit slowly let's start at the top here we got some equipped successes that's good and uh, let's go to the, well, it shows the warrior at level one right there. You know, he's got his armor, and his shiny plate, his long sword, and all stats, no buffs, no abilities. Uh, it goes to level two. And he sees, uh, seems to have leveled up correctly. He's got a buff, he's got some power attacks, and all that good stuff. So, seems to be working pretty good. But, uh... Yeah, I guess I guess we kind of knocked out a main thing there. It's just a little it's just a little wonky how you do this equip. So maybe we want to straighten this out a little further, and we can do that. There's uh, 
There's a couple big things I want to do that we haven't really got to yet. Uh, one of the big things is we need to sort out a way where they can't instantiate this weapon and armor on their own. And that's a little bit tricky. But I think the easiest way to do it here, and I'm just going to test this and see if it works. If you know a super good way, you're, uh, you're welcome to leave a comment or just change the code over on GitHub. But if we just go private on all these constructors, it makes a lot of things suddenly illegal. No one can mess with it. But if we do this, if we go somewhere in this class, we go friend class item. That means the item is now allowed to instantiate weapons. And I'm not sure if this is going to mess up our dynamic casting or not. We're just going to have to kind of find out. And we can do the same thing with armor. We just take this private, oh, move this armor down to private, all the constructors, and then somewhere in here go friend, class, item. Which means basically this is now allowed to instantiate items, which is going to do right here with this constructor basically maybe oh wait actually it's not so we need some sort of front end that does it basically that would kind of make more sense i think but this has got some uh underlines function definition for item not found okay so it doesn't it's saying it doesn't know what item is well it is probably because well i guess we can move this up underneath the item delegate specifically because everything below it, it figures out later. It's just the way headers are. They literally only know about things above them in headers. So uh, something to think about and keep in mind sometimes. So that's why I was underlining that. Because we're, we're saying friend class item. But there's nowhere above in this header where it knows where that what that is yet. Uh, that's all it is. So sometimes that causes some very confusing errors. And it's kind of one of the disadvantages of typing a lot of this. Uh, code that's actually going to build into your main like that. All right, but let's go ahead and try to run this and just see what happens. Likely we're going to get an error. Let's see. Yep. Okay. Cannot access private member. That's what we're getting. So there we go. Now we could have some sort of item creator front end, and that's probably going to be the best way to do it. Uh, we'll just have like a item creation manager, basically. And that item creation manager it's going to be the thing that has permission to all these constructors. So that that is probably what we're going to do in order to prevent a lot of strange shenanigans that people could try with these if we just leave everything public. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's make that item creation manager. So we're going to go new item. Just do it on H file for now. Item. Or what, what do we call this? We'll call this like... Uh, you know, there's a million different names. Could be like our item factory or item factory manager, item creator. Yeah, we'll just call it item item manager. This is essentially going to be like our extension type class. So let's go back into our items here. And we will say, you know, we'll just make basically all of these private. All of them have friend class item manager and it's going to be the same for the weapons item manager basically anything that's not those pure virtual ones or none of the delegates don't matter so much because no one can instantiate those anyway but these this armor and weapons we want it to be a little more specific and of course we're going to have to include item manager here all right, so we take this item manager, and this class is going to be a little bit interesting. We don't want people to instantiate item manager. It's just going to be like a set functionality for the world builder, basically, so that they can build their world as needed. With it. So it's going to be a class. It's going to be a, a pure static class. And we're just going to make all these, these functions public. Uh, the static keyword is optional, actually. We don't necessarily need it. But let's go, and go ahead and include item.h. And now, in our main, we want to make sure... Okay, this is fine. This is where we want to make our item creation function. So, let's just make a void, our static void, create 
armor. And basically we just need all the stuff that an armor constructor would need. So let's go into our item here. Go down to armor, wherever it is. Here it is. And let's just grab all the stuff that it needs right here. Name, core stats, slot. And let's put that right here. And actually, I guess we need to return an actual item. And this is, we kind of do need to decide if we want this item to be a pointer or not. But we need to think about a little bit of memory management if we're doing that. Because some interesting things are going to happen. Like if this copies, it's going to call the constructor. If it calls the constructor again, it's going to make another unique ID. We don't necessarily want that to happen. So it's probably best we return a pointer to item since we don't want the actual data copying. We just want to may and basically it's going to be better to manage pointers in this case because of those unique IDs. With potions and stuff, it might be a little different because we're not going to need to manage them. So we won't need to think about that. But these are the things you need to think about in order to make sure that you don't get strange duping issues, basically is you know yeah literally it can't be duped right if uh there's only one of them in your memory and there's only one pointer allowed that's a unique pointer so this is actually a great candidate for unique pointers and we'll probably refactor that later but it's important to understand raw pointers that way you can understand when to use unique pointers because they're going to save a lot of the code like eh, we're going we're to be writing kind of a lot of code to basically make these unique pointers and uh, hopefully that'll make more sense later for when to actually use the unique pointer. It just basically removes a lot of the code that, that you need to write when you're managing raw pointers. But you should not shy away from learning how to manage raw pointers, though, of course. All right, so item. What do we do here? We just uh, Let's just make a new item, pointer. Uh, we'll just call it temp item, and it's going to equal uh, new armor in this case, and let's just pass on all this stuff. Uh, actually that doesn't work. We need to do it as a constructor like so. Uh, well, this is going to look a little, a little weird. There, new item, new armor. And it's just, yeah, we kind of have a double pointer thing going on because, you know, item, if we go look at our item, uh, it's, uh, it's just a class. But its data member is the thing that uh, is also a pointer. So uh, this being public is dangerous. It's going to allow people to change it and reset it and stuff. Uh, it might even be better to just uh, put it into private and let people access it via getter functions. That way they can't decide to change this. That's, that's going to potentially cause a lot of the bugs that we've discussed. So we probably want like a get something about the data. That would that would make a lot more sense. Like get name, get whatever. Uh, we'll do that here in a second. For now, we're just gonna leave it all private. Yeah, right there is fine. Make sure the data manager is the only thing touching it. That way, basically, the end user is restricted to this function, and they literally can't mess anything up if we've carefully designed how they can use it from the front end. So this is somewhat like our interface class, I guess you'd call it. Eh, there might be a lot of different names for it, but all right. So they, we make that new item, it should be fine. And then we just return that pointer. Yeah. Right. So what happens here? Let's think about this real quick. All right. We are returning temp item, but what is temp item? Temp item is a pointer to this data that we created. That's all it is. So what that means is uh, this data is now hidden away somewhere in memory. And the only way we have access to it is through this pointer we, we returned. This pointer is probably returned as a copy pointer, and this old one is probably going to be destructed. So this pointer here is going to be gone. We're going to return a new fresh one uh, to the end user. So the end user will have access to that, which can point to the data uh, or point to the item. But since everything in here is private, they won't be able to do anything except access the public stuff. And the public stuff, uh, let's at least make something to start so that they're not uh, completely lost, I guess. Uh, we could just give them some 
some const access to it. So we could go const uh, item delegate get data. And this will just return the pointer. Now this is going to return a const pointer, which means they're not going to be allowed to modify anything in data. So it's relatively safe. However, a clever C++ programmer could use const cast on this and uh, cast the const away. It'd still change it anyway. But uh, don't use const cast. That's, that's the solution to that. If you're having to use const cast, you've got some design problems. Um, yeah, I don't know why they put const cast in the, in the C++ standard, honestly. It's it's kind of just a thing that's like, why use const anyway if you could just cast it away? It really makes no sense. It's kind of it's kind of weird. But this at least gives them a public way to get to the data, and then they can access any public members here. They could access name, for example. And if this data, if it ends up being some other kind of item, like if it ends up being... Uh, some other kind of if it ends up being equipment they could access the unique ID they could access the stats if it ends up being armor they could access the slot and they could call this get type and actually item yeah they could call I don't know we'll see we'll see what they could call it's going to be interesting because you can't instantiate an item delegate so whoever is creating this item it's definitely not just an item delegate. It's got to be, it's got to be something else. It's got to be armor or weapon at this point, really. There's no other options, but we'll make some other options. We'll make potions and stuff. All right. So there we go. We got create armor. Let's go ahead and make uh, another function here. We'll just call this one create weapon. And let's go to the item. Let's look at our weapon. Okay. And Let's just grab all this stuff and put it in our item manager. There we go. And it'll do essentially the same thing. We just need to now call this weapon and forward all this stuff. Name, stats, slot. Uh, we need a min, max, whether it's two-handed or not. There we go. So it's essentially going to do the same thing. And we've got this. We'll make more as needed here. But we're not completely done yet. There's a few things we have to think about still, mainly with this item. So we have we have data, and it's a pointer to data. But what happens when this class destructs? We need to make sure we actually delete the data, basically. So we'll just make a destructor here. We'll call delete underscore data, and we'll set it the null pointer. So yeah. That'll prevent memory leaks right there, because if someone destroys an item, we want to make sure it deletes whatever's in here. Because otherwise, if we're starting to get the hint about how pointers work, uh, they don't manage the underlying thing that was created that it's pointing to. They just give you access to it. So it's still up to you to manage that data. And that's that's really the big thing. That's, that's the crux of the whole thing. So let's go ahead and build this, resolve any errors. Looks like it's complaining about missing something. Int assumed. Oh, it doesn't, it's just saying it doesn't know what an item is, basically. We might have a circular dependency somewhere. Let me just me dig in here. Doesn't know what string is. Okay, well, let's, let's analyze something. This is the thing with header stuff like this. If we go to item here, Notice it includes score stats, then item manager. Just the fact that it includes item manager is going to cause issues because we include item manager or we include item, right? It's going to include core stats and it's going to include item manager, which is going to go back here and include item. And it's going to do the circular thing that's causing bugs. Let's see if just removing that resolves it. Uh, Not quite. Okay. Actually, we're close. We just have some issues in main now. So yeah, we're, we can no longer do this sort of thing. We now have to say item pointer full plate equals create arm. And then we need to pass it all the constructor stuff like so. Uh, but this is scoped specifically to that item manager class. So we gotta we gotta do that. Doesn't know what item manager is, naturally. Of course it doesn't, because we haven't 
included it. Let's include it. Very good. Now we're looking pretty good here. So now the equip. Uh, we're, we've got a lot of work to do on this equip. Uh, what do we got wrong here? Oh, we got one too many parentheses there. All right, we don't want to do equip like this. That's a bit dangerous. We just want to do like equip item. So let's just get rid of all that and just pass in the full plate mail. And it's going to be up to this equip function to understand what that is. Because in theory, you know, you want to be able to just like drag uh, your new item that you want to equip onto your character. You don't necessarily, you know, you just, if you generically say equip this, it shouldn't handle it correctly. So that's, that's the big thing here. So this no longer should be equipment delegate. It should be just an item pointer. And this is going to be a little bit weird here. Uh, we're going to rename this real quick. Thing, item, to equip. That way it's kind of clear. Uh, get data. So, oh, it be pointer. So this is going to grab the data, and if there's no data there, it's just going to return. So that's going to handle the base case of whatever it is being null. Uh, I guess, you know, maybe we should do another check of making sure this, to begin with, is null. Uh, return false. There we go. Just uh, handle a couple base cases there. But now these casts are going to be a little bit different. Uh, this is going to be get data. And it's not going to like this. So we can kind of hover over and get a hint here. And it says dynamic casts cannot cast away const or other type qualifiers. So this being const is a problem for this whole, this whole setup. So probably what we want to do here in this player character is, uh, uh, basically, well, go to items here and just allow player character access to this data by just making it a print. That'll, that'll be a quick fix. This is maybe not a good long-term fix though, because it could cause some dangers. But for now, we at least won't have to use the const function version. Let's see, where was it? Uh, it's a search armor here. Or quip. There it is. Okay, because now we could just go underscore data. We're allowed to access it. So now we can actually check if it's armor or not. Uh, we've already checked a few base cases. We made sure you're not passing in a null item. Make sure it's actually got data. And then we can go, hey, cast this data to armor. If that succeeds, uh, equip it to the right slot. And return true, which will stop the function. If uh, if it's not armor, so if this doesn't work, then try to see if it's a weapon. So this quip function, I've said this a lot, I know, it's it's going to change a lot. We're going to keep working with it until it's just right. So check if it's a weapon, check what slot it is, quip to that slot. And uh, notice we're doing some dangerous things here. That's kind of intended. Uh, see, we got a to-do, move to inventory instead of delete. So eventually what we're going to be doing in this quit function is we're also going to be passing it a reference to an inventory. Because in theory, you can't be equipping something out of nowhere. You got to be pulling it from some inventory. So we're just going to, rather than deleting the old slot, we will be moving it out of an inventory or swapping the whatever you're putting in its place into your inventory. So we'll be doing some of that kind of stuff. Uh, but for now... Like we said in the last episode, we're just deleting the old item that was in that place, which might do some weird stuff. All right, so let's see if this builds. We got a few errors, a few things it's complaining about. Static, ignored. Uh, I don't think you actually need static here. Let's try that. Uh, it says we got some syntax errors. Okay, I guess it's probably accurate. Oh yeah, this equip. Equip full plate mail. Uh, what's wrong with that? see here. Okay, we're just missing a set parentheses. And we've also got a few other functions here that we need to straighten out a little bit. So we've got the full plate mail there. Now we've got some leather armor. And leather armor, we can say item 
Uh, we need this to be a pointer and we need to use our create function equals item manager create armor once again pass it all its stuff there and uh, into that and then on the equip we can just say equip leather helm which is so much more clean than the other way to so just say equip the leather helm and there we go and same with the sword except pointer equals create well item manager item manager create weapon pass it all the constructor stuff make the parentheses correct and we'll put long sword in here equip long sword okay and if that is all happy we should get a successful compile which we do so let's go ahead and hit play and just check that that all works now hit success Warrior's got his stuff. Seems to level up okay. All right, and very good. We've now got an item creation system worked out that is a little, a little better on the memory handling and uh, should be pretty close to un undupable. So stay tuned for next episode. That's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, appreciate the support. I'll see you next time. Matt out.